So good morning, Master Educators. This is Amy from Iridescent slash Technovation, welcoming you to your orientation for Master Educator training, for all the world pitch goodness, for everything that we're about to embark on together in the next week. I'm really excited. We're all working hard to get things ready and exciting for you guys. So we really do appreciate your coming all this way, and we just wanted to give you some heads up on stuff that's going on and some important information that you'll need to know. Feel free to use the chat function and ask any questions and know that you can access this presentation in the panel section, in the material section of your control panel, and I'll be sending out a recording of this afterwards. So don't feel like you have to take notes furiously unless you want to. Okay, so what we're going to talk about in this orientation is the overview of your training and all the world pitch stuff. We're going to talk about the pre-visit assignment that I hope you guys are able to get to. Some key reminders, some asking, answering any questions on what you should bring or wear. Um, you guys are all adults, so you probably know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, if you have questions, no worries. So... You guys are going to be here for three days, and I wish you could be here a whole week. But unfortunately, um, there's so much going on, and we're also delivering student ambassador training the day before you guys. And the finalist teams are coming on Monday next week. They're all rehearsing like mad. We're all um, pulling together to create a really great experience for you guys. So... For me, basically, and we'll go into detail on all this stuff in just a bit, on Wednesday, you guys are all either going to be in town already or arrive, and we would like for you to get to the hotel, which is the Red Roof Inn in Burlingame. It's just about, you know, a couple of miles south of the airport to be there around 4, and then we're going to be meeting in the lobby at the hotel around 4. And we'll talk about all this again. But you guys that day will have dinner. We're going to get you on a bus to the World Pitch event, which is in Mountain View at a company called Intuit. And, yeah, very basically that first day you'll be arriving, settling in, um, getting kind of launching right into the excitement. And hopefully that will give you some time to relax. So if you haven't already done the assignment, um, I'm going to always be encouraging you to cram it in where you can. And yeah, just use that night to get to know your roommate. We put you all together with people from other countries and places so that you can maximize your kind of international experience here. And then Thursday is where all the training really happens for you guys. And even though I'd like to spend so much more time and luxuriate, we have one day, so we're going to be hitting the ground running. Um, that morning, you'll be getting breakfast. Um, we're going to get you on a bus to the training, which will be at the University of San Francisco. We'll have lunch there. Training will continue. There will be dinner and then the award ceremony. And then Friday, you'll all have breakfast at the hotel, and you will begin the process of ending your training and getting to wherever you need to go. So a lot of you have asked about the courtesy shuttle. So I pulled a picture of basic um, San Francisco airport information about where you can get those. So if you look here, you'll see that there's a courtesy shuttle in many different terminals. So depending on where you land, I'm guessing a lot of you will be at the international terminal. You'll be going to level three, and you'll find that center island in the transportation zone where people usually get picked up. It's usually um, not the first thing you're going to come to, but it's the second kind of lane. It's more on the outside, and you should see a phone there to dial in to the Red Roof Inn shuttle. I looked it up, and the dial code for that is 23. And just in case you need the number of the hotel, if you're having issues or anything, the number there is 650-342-7772. So that is probably a number you're going to want to keep or write down and maybe also print out this map. 
there are usually, I mean, I was recently in the San Francisco airport and it's pretty good with signage. And also there will be an iridescent staff member at the airport that day, just in case anything should happen. I'm going to be giving you my phone number at the end, but um, I'll also type in the chat room right now. It's 510-725-0160. And Sheila's asking, um, okay, she's hearing that, she's hearing me fine. <laughs> I thought she was asking a question. Um, have a lot of you been to San Francisco before? It's a pretty easy airport. I'm really glad that there's BART there. Um, you guys won't need the public transportation system because you all have access to this free shuttle. But if you're going to be in town maybe a couple of days before and you have questions about how to get to the Red Roof Inn, just feel free to email me and I'll do what I can to help you out. Okay, so as I was mentioning, um, on Wednesday you all will be arriving. You can check in as early as 1 p.m. I called the hotel to ask because someone had asked me. So it's nice that they let you check in a little bit early. You can relax. It's really a neat hotel. It's right on the water. So there's probably a cool bar there that you can sit, watch the airplanes land, um, relax, kick back a little. And then at 4 p.m. on Wednesday next week, we're going to ask you to gather in that hotel lobby and be dressed semi-formally. Just think about what you would wear to like a work meeting. Um, all the girls are super excited who are in the finalist teams. They usually get very gussied up. So it is a pretty formal event. Um, if you have a cool dress or some, you know, like a, a work suit, that's cool. You don't have to wear a tuxedo or anything, <laughs> but, you know, we're all going to be gussying up a bit. Be mindful, though, that it can get a little chilly in the evenings, probably not in Mountain View, but on the way, so you might want to bring a jacket or something. Um, it usually doesn't rain here, at least not right now, so I don't think you're going to need to bring an umbrella. Um, also... Things to note for this day is that we'll be serving you dinner. So anything you need to eat before about 5.30, you'll be responsible for getting yourself. So just wanted to let you know. And then the World Pitch event happens at 7 p.m. It's going to be really fun. And we'll be bringing you back to the Red Roof Inn by bus. So all that transportation is taken care of for you guys. So... Yes, please come visit, uh, complete the pre-visit activities. <laughs> um, this is because I want you to be able to come here and just really be able to relax and focus on what we're doing. And the workshop I have and the orientation training I have for you is very hands-on. And don't worry, uh, we're all going to come up with lots of cool ideas when you get here. So that Thursday morning, we're going to have breakfast at the hotel. And uh, if you can get up a little early for that, that'd be great. Uh, we're going to be gathering in the lobby for the bus. Um, I might not be there at the hotel with you guys, but another iridescent staff member will be. So there will be always a contact with you guys, pretty much. So no worries there. So at 8 a.m., we're going to leave for, or you guys are going to leave actually for the University of San Francisco. And feel free to just wear whatever is comfy for you as we do our training. We're going to be on our feet a little bit, doing a lot of workshoppy things. So if you don't want to be jumping around on heels all day, <laughs> uh, that's totally fine. We're flat. We're something comfortable. We should be giving you um, a World Pitch t-shirt. So... I would love to take a picture at the end of that day so that we don't have to look at that lame picture I put in for the Facebook group. <laughs> and also just to have a great picture of us. And if you want to wear your t-shirt for that, that'd be really nice. So um, I forget what color your t-shirts are. They're either going to be black, I mean, um, dark gray, or kind of maroon or teal. So... I guess if you want to wear jeans or a skirt or something, that's totally cool. If not, no worries. So uh, we'll talk about the activities in just a bit.
But very basically, that morning from about 9 to 12, we're going to be doing doing some activities to learn more about each other and more about the learning communities that we're working with. You'll get a break. So I'm very mindful of bio breaks and stuff like that. We'll have snacks. Um, then 12 p.m. we'll have lunch. We'll get a full hour for that. And then we'll continue training from 1 to 4. We have another break in between. And you should be walking away with an action plan for engaging your Technovation community. So it's going to be very hands-on, very exciting. And I just can't wait to see all of what you guys bring. If you can manage to get pictures of your neighborhood or the community that you're working with, and either bring them with you or email me, post them to Facebook. I just want to get the fullest picture possible of the communities that you're engaging so that when we actually do meet, um, I have a lot of background information about you guys. All right. So are there any very basic questions yet? I'm about to get into um, – talk a little bit about the award ceremony, and then go back into the assignments. So on the 14th in the evening, uh, it's going to be a very full day for you guys. So I hope that you drink lots of water, that you bring uh, any snacks from your home countries that might help you, like protein or nuts or whatever. Um, you'll be getting refreshments, though, from 5.30 on. And there will be some finalist teams and visiting teams, which is very cool, showing their apps during an app expo. And all of this is happening really close by each other in the University of San Francisco. So the nice thing about that is we'll be all together and then we can just quickly and easily go to where the action is later. At 6.30, there will be pitch presentations and an award ceremony. Um, even though the students are doing their pitches the night before, um, this is just a little reminder. It's like a, a smaller version of their pitches so people remember what they were. And then there will be the award ceremony. So there will be a country march. Uh, I'm not sure if my colleague Ali has reached out to any of you, but um, I think there's something like 30 to 40 countries being represented from all the visiting teams, the finalist teams, you guys, and the student ambassadors. This year, um, for those who were here last year, it was still a very busy, cool event. But this year, we're kind of turning this into more of a summit because we want to de-emphasize the whole competition part and make all the teams who come feel very welcomed and know that it's a process. It's not just about winning, but it's about making connections, furthering your experience, um, making lifelong friends, and just keeping up the hard work that they've been doing. So that's what a lot of this is about. And we have a really cool keynote person named Debbie Sterling, who's the CEO, CEO of Goldie Blocks. And I'm really psyched because we're giving the student ambassadors a tour of Goldie Blocks on Tuesday night. So it's nice to bookend this experience for them with that tour and have Debbie Sterling there. She's kind of like the darling of women in technology she has a company called Goldie Blocks. Have you guys heard of it? It's basically like an engineering game for girls. And she wanted to disrupt the whole pink aisle at the store and make um, learning experiences fun for girls. So she's very cool, very young, very hip. And then um, there will be announcements of the finalists. This year there will be a People's Choice Award. And there will also be an award going out to a regional ambassador. I'm not revealing who it is. <laughs> She's not on the call, don't worry. Uh, but it's just a surprise for her, and it's really nice. Um, we want to celebrate, really, everybody who, who takes part, who helps roll this out into their communities and engage them. And then we will party after with the post-ceremony reception. So be ready to... Have fun, um, relax a little. Um, really, one of the purposes of getting you guys together is to solidify our identity as a group. And I really want you to use every possibility you can to meet each other. And then we'll be taking you back to the hotel because you'll be very tired. <laughs> 
And then Friday, uh, there isn't a whole lot to mention about Friday, but you guys will have breakfast at your hotel. I'm going to try to stop in if I can and say goodbye. I'm not sure if I'll be able to because I might have to go to a different event. But I will be definitely saying my goodbyes Thursday night and so excited to meet you guys. The same uh, deal is going on with the shuttles to the airport. These are free. They're from the Red Earth Inn. Um, I'm pretty sure if you go to the front desk when you check in and let them know when you're leaving that they can help you arrange for this shuttle to the airport. And if you're staying over the weekend, let me know. Um, that Saturday, I'm kind of busy, but if you're around on Sunday or you want to do something, I think I'm free on Sunday. So I would love to just continue our friendship and hang out and do whatever I can. Uh, one thing I do want to mention that was a really cool idea from Lidette Kador. Um, Lidette, are you here right now? Let's see. I'm not sure I see him. But um, he was wondering if he could get a tour of any Silicon Valley companies when he's here because he plans to stay longer. And I was thinking, wow, that's a great idea. Um, right now, I don't have the resources to organize something like that for you guys. But if there was some critical mass and some people are staying and would like a tour of Google or somewhere, I do have friends scattered here and there who might be able to to offer a tour or, you know, talk to you guys. So let me know. And use the chat feature of, of the Facebook group. And you can use that to your advantage and try to organize stuff. All right, so are there any last questions about the itinerary or stuff going on before I launch into the activities? Yusin Sharfi says, yeah, it's a great idea. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, could you guys let me know if you guys plan to be around that Sunday? Um, what is that date? It's the 17th, I think. It might be nice to just get together. I live in Oakland, and I have a huge apartment loft, and we live near places in, in Oakland, like Jack London Square. So if you want to just hang out and relax that day, let, uh, let's touch base again when we meet at training, and we'll figure a plan to have some fun. Aw, Adita. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I think it's really great. You know, Oakland is really up and coming. There's a great ferry boat you can take from. <laughs> There's a ferry you can take from Pier, the ferry building, all the way to Jack London Square in Oakland. So maybe I could arrange something. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Marie Claire is asking whether you need to bring a computer during the training. I would say a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing is on stickies. We're going to be like writing stuff on whiteboards. So you don't absolutely need a laptop. But if you do want to take very detailed notes, I would recommend bringing your laptop. And it might come in useful. So if you maybe have, um, you know, just a tablet or something, like I don't want you to have to bring unnecessary items. But if you have a tablet or something you use, or just a really light laptop, I would recommend bringing it. And don't forget, if you do that, to bring the appropriate chargers, um, adapters, stuff like that. This one's asking, what is the difference between the world pitch and the final ceremony? Which one is more formal? So I would say they're both equally the same um, in terms of formal formality. Um, one is the world pitch is on Wednesday. And that is where the finalist teams will really be kind of work, uh, presenting their final pitches. So they're going to be pretty nervous, pretty dressed up, and all that. That is where the pressure is the most on them, really. Um, and the final ceremony is where on Thursday we find out which team the judges have decided will take first and second place. So that is where they kind of review their pitches. We have a little app expo. The students during the daytime, while you guys are getting training, they're going to be taking part in workshops and learning about all bunch of cool stuff like virtual reality, um, internet of things, stuff like that. 
So I would say that they're both equally as formal. You don't have to wear something like you would wear to like a very fancy event, but uh, maybe just a nice dress or a suit, something like that. All right, then let us talk about the pre-visit assignment. <laughs> So um, we're going to get together and learn more about each other. This is meant to be lots of fun. Um, I, don't, I want you guys to be thinking a lot on your feet when you come. So before you come, it would be great if you could watch a short video about what a personal learning network is. Um, do you guys basically know what that is as educators? I'm guessing that you might. Um, it's a concept that's been around for a couple of years. And it's about how you can develop a learning network for yourself. So to keep, you know, it, it basically supports the theory of ongoing lifelong learning, um, helping you figure out how you can develop your own personal network to continue learning about things you don't know about or to strengthen your community. So I found a, a cute short video about that. And then I also compiled oops, a networking activity. Um, if you have the your presentation open, you can click on that. And I basically want you to assess who you typically network with to solve your problems in your, you know, to get things done in your personal life, and then eventually think about how you get stuff done for your jobs. And when we think about those networks, um, I think you're going to find that you tend to and everybody does this, you know, we all tend to, to gravitate towards people who are like ourselves or fit a certain demographic. And the point of this is for you to assess the, the health of your networking, um, to see who you might be able to reach out to in the future when you come across hurdles for launching your Technovation Club. So this is meant to be a kind of reflective exercise before you get here. You'll have opportunities. Um, if you could do this and print it out and bring it with you, that would be my, my best, my best um, hope. <laughs> I realize that you can't all do it. You probably might not have time, but I will be giving you time on Wednesday night. I'll bring out hard copies so that you can think about it. Um, you'll have it with you in your launch kits. So that's the purpose of that, because we're going to apply that knowledge to developing a sort of action plan for um, mapping out how we would create a technovation club, or if you've already done it, how can you make it stronger? How can you make your community stronger? That's why we're doing this whole networking activity. And then other things I'd love for you to do are just engage in the, the Master Educator Facebook group. If you can, share pictures of yourself and why you're excited about this, um, pictures of the community you will work with, that would be really cool. Uh, some of you have already done that, and that's great. So I really thank you. And then, finally, I have a survey, and there's another underlying reason for me to give you a survey. I'm going to click on it right now so you know some basic questions. So first, what's your name? Um, what were your motivations? to bringing Technovation to your community. Um, so most of you have been coaches. Some of you have been mentors. So I think that you guys can learn a lot from each other, and I'm really excited about that. So I want you to dig deeper into what motivated you to support your team and think about what um, when you were coming of age, you know, did you have a mentor or somebody who really made an impact in your life? So... Um, that is the we're going to be mapping out what success looks like for creating these clubs and being educators and coaches to these teams. So during our activities, we'll be talking about this too. Um, mostly, I want you guys to paint that picture of what the learning environment is because I'm pretty aware of a lot of common issues that that you guys come across, like internet connectivity. Um, whether you have access to laptops, Android, stuff like that. So I'd like to know what tools you will have access to when you do this, this whole Technovation program next year. Because one of the first activities you're going to do when you go home 
is actually come up with a list of your needs to see if we can support them either materially or, you know, supportively in any way. So beyond the stipend that you you guys are going to get, there is a possibility for other resource support. And that's not to say like we can just give you everything we need, you need, because we might not be able to do that realistically. But there are some things we might be able to help you with. And we also want you to be able to tap into your community and figure out how to get those things you need. So that is the motivation for that question. And then, um, since you guys are going to be collaborators with us on all, you know, content, resources, I really want to know if there was some something you used, whether Technovation helped give you that resource, or whether you dug deeper and, or created some resources yourselves to support your teams. And I want you to just pick one area of the curriculum where that was the case. So... There's the ideation, you know, how do I, how do my teams come up with the problems they want to solve? Is it a real problem in the community? Or is the area you want to focus on prototyping and programming, paper prototyping, app inventor, whatever, whatever you used? Um, did you use a resource or create one that was really helpful for business planning? Or finally, did you find a great one for pitching? So, uh, this is where we're going to get a little bit into the content. Um, this is not necessarily going to be discussed a whole lot during training, during our in-person training, but um, we will be conducting some interviews that will be used for the curriculum 2017 that talk about these things. So if any of you respond to these questions in ways that I think would be really great for these instructional videos, which we'll do on Thursday. Um, not all of you, just some maybe. Uh, that would that is another reason I'm asking these questions. So maybe just keep that in mind. Okay, um, just quickly wrapping up. I'd love for you guys to tell a story about a particular challenge your team faced and how you as a coach or mentor helped them overcome it. So think about your storytelling skills. <laughs> this is... Um, this is your chance to paint that picture and to really tap into your own strengths and how you, you help them overcome it. My overall goal is for us to create some extra resources for people who are not master educators so they can learn best practices from you guys. So think about your storytelling. I want to hear a story about a challenge your team faced. All right. So... One thing, I mean, another motivation for the next question, how did or will being a coach or mentor help you in your own PD or professional development is to think about this program as professional development. So you're doing it for your teams, but you're also doing it for yourselves. And that's where it ties back into the personal learning networks. And finally, what do you hope your students will get for, from participating in the Technovation program? So some of you may have done the program more than one year. Um, you can think about this like if we did it a second year, you know, what do I want my teens to be getting out of it the second year? You know, because everybody learns so much when they help um, deliver this program. So what are some things that you can think of that you would like to focus on this year that your students will bring away from this program? And then finally, just for fun, describe your experience in a few words in your native language. You know, one thing I think that is very cool and one thing I did intentionally was to bring together the most international group of educators that I could. Because you guys all have some commonalities. You're going to have very creative solutions to your problems that other people can benefit from. And I just want to take the chance to say that I'm extremely impressed with all of you and that I'm just very excited to meet you. And I love um, knowing how to say hello in whichever language you speak. So it'll be fun. Any questions on these questions or some of the reasons why I chose to ask them? I do realize this is a bit of front loading of work for you guys. So do your best. Um, you're not getting graded or anything. 
But in order for me to help make your training in person the most valuable experience I can, the more I know about you guys as a group, the better and cooler it will be. So back to the presentation. Any questions about the activities? Are you excited? <laughs> OK. Um, OK, so wrapping things up. <laughs> Yay! Good. I'm so glad. I am so super psyched to meet you guys. <laughs> okay, so things to remember. So some basic housekeeping. I sent an email reminder about the release forms, and we'll definitely need those signed. These are electronic. If for some reason you're having a problem getting those sent to us or accessing them, let me know, and I'll just <laughs> Six more sleeps. Yes. Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> but energized at the same time. Um, I think a lot of you told me whether you had food allergies and that initial survey I sent out. And we're trying to be really mindful for vegetarians. I myself am one, so I'm pretty sensitive to that. If you're, like, deathly allergic to something, please let us know. Um, I don't think... Okay. Oh, here's a good question. Um, Marjana is asking, um, if I can't attend due to travel issues at this time, can I come during the Technovation season to visit and get any first-hand training? Yeah, of course. Some of you, I realize, may not be able to come, and we, we know that visa issues are not always a walk in the park. And we're so sorry for anybody who had a visa issue, honestly. I mean, that is not something we hoped for. but that said, you are all still master educators, whether or not you can come to this in-person training. You're all going to be receiving a launch kit, digitally at least, and a, one, a hard copy if you come. And those are going to contain the activities that we're doing in in-person training. So if you can't unfortunately be here, we would still like you to do the activities because there will be follow-up. We're going to be meeting roughly once a month you know, from here to the end of the next Technovation season to get you guys set up with everything you need, you know, support-wise. So, yeah, you can come. If you happen to be in San Francisco or I happen to be wherever you are or whatnot, we can find ways to meet in person and definitely solidify this, this group sense. So, yes, to answer your question, Marjan, yes. <laughs> Okay, um, so by July 13th, it would be great to have your pre-visit activities done. Um, if you are coming with family or friends, don't forget to register them for the, the pitch and the award ceremony. If you need that link, just email me. Um, if you dig deep in your emails, you'll probably find them too. Definitely bring warm layers. I am not from the Bay Area. I'm from New York. <laughs> I am still not used to this weather, you know. It says it's going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but I am just always still chilled to the bone. <laughs> and summer in San Francisco, as you heard, is like the coldest winter some poet has ever had, which means like there's a really cold breeze. <laughs> so if you're the kind of person who gets chilly, who feels cold even on the best of days, bring some layers. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. If worse comes to worse, I can always bring you something from my home if we share the same size. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, don't bring a winter coat, but um, definitely bring, if you have like a windbreaker, if we go out, if you go outside, that's helpful. Um, I just usually wear really thin layers, one on top of each other to keep warm. And since San Francisco is pretty hilly, you're going to want flats. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll just, like flats are comfortable shoes if you're out and about. San Francisco is a pretty safe space. And, you know, it's not, just be careful like you would anywhere else. Um, don't have your phone out like acting like a clueless tourist. Try to research where you're going before you go. That's what I even do here. You know, I try to figure out where I'm going. 
Don't get distracted with your iPods or cell phones when you're walking around in big tourist zones. Um, that's about it. At the event, um, we're going to have name tags for you. We're going to have T-shirts. Um, oh, I have to say this, but I really doubt I need to. <laughs> As um, In case any damages happen to your hotel room, you guys would be responsible for that. Um, you know, we also have that waiver of liability form. So just be at your best behavior at all times. I'm sure you will be. And then we already talked about what to bring or wear. Um, we're going to take a group picture. It's going to be fun. Marjan says, you mentioned a stipend. If I can't attend, will we still be eligible for the stipend? Yes. So the stipend, I don't have exactly all the details about that. Um, the initial idea is to give you guys each $2,000 over the course of two years. And they will be... It will be delivered incrementally, so after certain amounts of work are done, you'll get an installment. So one of the reasons for our monthly meetings is to make sure everybody is doing everything we need them to be, and, you know, this is also for your benefit, so we can support you. So yeah, the stipend is contingent on participation and ongoing participation. And it, even if you can't come to this event, we know you all tried your best and we'll find ways to touch base again about what you missed so that you will be in the loop the entire time and on the same page as everybody. And thank you, Martin. You're so sweet. <laughs> Technovation is quite awesome. Thanks for the great opportunity, she says. Awesome. Yes. So do you guys have any final questions for me? For each other? Um, I really do recommend using the Facebook group to connect with each other before you get here. Yvette says, yes, I have a question. What is your question? You can write it down. She says, wait. Hold on, Yvette. Maybe I'll unmute you. How about that? Okay, Yvette, you're all good to talk. Great. Can you hear me? Yeah. How are you? Okay. Fine. Thanks. Um, I have a question about uh, the regional directors. You know, we the pitch event um, last year. There was some monies available to help trying to secure facilities or whatever it was that we needed. Um, this this stipend for the master educator training is not going to put the other stipend in jeopardy. No. Or are the yeah, okay, great. those are two separate things entirely. We want to compensate you for the work that you're putting in as a master educator. So that, that stipend is yours. And any external resources for launching events um, based on need, that is a separate thing. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, we realize we are compensating you because we are extremely thankful for the participation you're going to be providing. And we know it's a lot of work to be coaches or mentors, and now we're asking you to step up. So this is our thank you to you. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? Feel free to let me know. Um, the country code for the U.S. is 011, I believe. So... Um, you can call me, um, be mindful of the time difference if you're coming from somewhere drastically different. <laughs> but this weekend, I'm pretty much on call and getting ready for you guys. So I'm going to unmic you all so we can all say goodbye. Oops. Okay, you're all unmiced. <laughs> so we can say goodbye. And I, bye. bye. I look forward to meeting you. Bye. I am absolutely excited. Yes, I'm here. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, see you soon, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye.